Hello to all the viewers of the channel. This video is specifically made for people who are just starting to take their first steps in electronics. For any hobbyist, the main tools are a soldering iron, a multimeter, and of course, a lab power supply. Using an adjustable power supply allows you to test DIY projects with different power voltages. The power supply we discussed can deliver up to one amp of current to the load. I assure you, that's more than enough for most hobbyist needs. It's a linear power supply. It's built using just two transistors. Provides smooth regulation of output voltage within the range from 0 to 15 volts. You can increase the voltage by replacing the Zener diode with a higher voltage one. It sets the upper limit of the output voltage. A simple parametric or linear regulator is essentially a voltage divider made with two resistors, where the output voltage is taken from the lower resistor. But the output voltage of such a circuit strictly depends on the input voltage and the current delivered depends on the power of the resistors. Let's replace the divider with a variable resistor. By moving the slider, we can already adjust the output voltage, but the issue with the current delivery and the stability of the circuit remains. Using a simple Zener diode, let's say a 15 volt one, improves the situation. In this case, at the output of the circuit we can regulate the voltage from 0 to 15 volts. Moreover, if the input voltage changes, the output voltage will remain stable. But this type of regulator is clearly low power and won't work as a lab power supply. To solve this problem, an amplifying element, a transistor, is added to the circuit. The transistor amplifies the current from the divider, and our circuit can now be used as a low-power voltage regulator. By adding a second transistor to the circuit, we'll get a very high current gain and also relieve the Zener diode. Now, the lower transistor will control the main power transistor. That is, the Zener diode in our circuit sets the maximum output. Voltage. The variable resistor allows us to adjust this voltage while the transistor stage amplifies the current. The main current flows through the upper transistor. At high currents, it will heat up, so it needs a cooling heatsink. The capacitors used are needed to filter the power supply from all sorts of noise and ripples. The resistor at the output of the circuit is a load resistor designed for the correct operation of the pointer voltmeter. Without it, when the output voltage decreases, the output capacitor will remain charged, and the voltmeter needle will move with a delay. The resistance of this resistor may deviate from the specified value by 30%. The transformer should provide at least 15 volts and 1 amp on the secondary winding. My version only outputs 500 milliamperes, so the power supply is a bit weaker than I originally planned. The diode rectifier is made from any four diodes rated for one amp. You can use ready-made diode rectifiers. I decided not to make a printed circuit board. Here, the components are arranged in a more original way. Now in front of you is the same circuit, translated to the Sylvia component base. Voltmeter and ammeter. I have analog meters, but there's nothing stopping you from using modern digital displays. The case is completely made of 4mm plywood, which I further sanded and coated with varnish. Next is the assembly process. There's no need to comment on this stage. So, enjoy the nice music, and you'll find the link to the channel of the music's author in the description. As you noticed, the power supply doesn't have a fuse on the input. That's not right, but I used a very high quality transformer that doesn't heat up at all, even during a prolonged short circuit on the secondary winding. 
By the way, if there's a need, you can also add a current limiting function to the circuit. As a result, we have assembled a simple universal laboratory power supply. It is, of course, not super duper, but for a beginner radio amateur it is the best. Cheap and cheerful, and most importantly, you can assemble it literally from scraps at hand. Friends, this video has come to an end. If you found it helpful, feel free to give it a like and share the video with your friends on social media. All the necessary information is, of course, in the description. You'll also find links to purchase some pretty good and budget-friendly lab power supplies there. And with that, I'll say goodbye. As always, this was Kasiana K. Until next time, take care.